Okay, welcome to the deep dive. Ready to jump in. Let's do it. Because today uh, we're exploring something I think taps into a real specific kind of tech nostalgia. You know that feeling. Oh yeah, like remembering a device you just loved. Exactly. And wishing you could have it back, but, you know, better. Yeah. Better is definitely the keyword. And we've been digging through this source, this article, talking about a project trying to do exactly that. Bring back a tech icon. Not just any icon, right? The BlackBerry Classic, the Q20. That's the one. Yeah. But giving it a, um, a proper 21st century update. So our mission here really is to unpack this whole Xinhua Q25 project. Yeah, what is this thing? How's it blending the old and the new? And, you know, what does it actually mean for people who miss, well, clicking keys? Or yeah. just having a phone that looks different. It's that combination, isn't it? Yeah. Digital nostalgia plus modern Android power. It's a really interesting idea. Honestly, just reading about it got me thinking. Me too. So uh, let's get right into the details. The source says the company doing this isn't BlackBerry Limited. All right, that's important. It's a Chinese company, Xinhua Technologies. And they're not just like inspired by the classic. They're aiming for, what did the article say? Meticulous mimicry. Yeah, meticulous mimicry of the Q20. The original classic. So we're talking the actual shape, the feel, that specific design. Exactly. They want it to feel right. The BlackBerry body, the square screen, and crucially, that physical keyboard. Uh-huh. But wait, there's more. Remember the little blinking LED for oh, notifications? Oh, yeah, the blinky light. Yes, that's such a BlackBerry thing. Well, apparently that's coming back too. Wow. That's a detail that'll hit home for former users. Such a simple, glanceable thing. Totally. And the screen, you mentioned the square screen. Yeah, it's keeping that aspect ratio, 720 by 720 touchscreen, <laughs> just like the Q20. That's what the source says, maintaining that square look. It's uh, definitely not common now. No, not at all. Great for some things, maybe not for watching movies, but unique. It signals they're serious about the classic part. For sure. Okay, but here's the twist, the modern part. Right. Underneath that classic shell, the article says it's running Android, modern Android 13. And that is the fundamental shift. That's what makes this whole thing, well, potentially viable. Because the old BlackBerry OS, great as it was for some things, just couldn't keep up with apps. Exactly. It fell behind iOS and Android. So Zinwa putting Android 13 in there, it means access to the Google Play Store. So you get the BlackBerry feel, the keyboard, the design, but with like millions of apps. All the apps. Oh. Everything you expect from a smartphone in, well... 2025 when this is supposed to come out. So it's not just a retro toy. It's a capable modern phone that just looks like a classic BlackBerry. You can run Instagram, Spotify, your bank app, everything. It solves the app gap problem that, you know, mm -hmm. ultimately hurt BlackBerry OS so much. Okay, but the article mentioned a catch with the Android version, didn't it? Like no big future upgrades. That's what it indicates, yeah. Yeah. It launches with Android 13 and Zinwa says they'll provide regular updates. But mostly bug fixes, stability stuff, not Android 14 or 15 down the line. Seems like it. It's pretty common for manufacturers, especially with more niche hardware. Focus on making this version stable for the life of the device. So something to be aware of for long-term cutting edge features, but maybe not a deal breaker. It's a trade-off. You get the form factor in Android 13 apps now, but maybe not the absolute latest OS features in three years. Still, compared to where BlackBerry OS ended, Android 13 is a huge leap. Absolutely. Okay, so what's actually powering this thing? What are the specs inside? The source mentions a MediaTek Helio G99 chipset. Helio G99. Okay, I know that one. Solid mid-range chip. Right, see it a lot. Exactly. It's popular, capable, pretty power efficient. Not a flagship killer by any means. But good enough for everyday stuff. Browsing, messaging, email, most apps. Should be plenty for that. It's a good balance for a device. Probably focus more on communication and productivity than, say, high-end gaming. Makes sense. Keeps the cost down, too, presumably. And should be decent on the battery. Hopefully, yeah. Especially <laughs> with that smaller screen. And memory. RAM and storage look pretty good in the article. Yeah, 12 GB of RAM, which is actually quite generous for a G99 device. Oh, definitely. That'll help with multitasking. Jumping between apps? For sure. And oh. 256 GB of internal storage. Also, plenty for most people. Apps, photos, downloads. That's a good amount. Yeah, seems like a solid setup for the intended use. Okay, what about pictures? It's still a phone. People need cameras. True. The article says a 50 megapixel main camera on the back. 50 MP, okay. Standard mid-range fare these days. Pretty much. Should be decent, especially in good light. And an 8 megapixel front camera for selfies and video calls. Fine, yeah. Serviceable. 
And battery size. He mentioned efficiency. It's listed as 3,000 miller. Hmm. 3,000. Sounds a little small by today's standards. It does, but again, consider the Helio G99's efficiency of that 720 by 720 screen. It's powering less demanding hardware than, say, a giant flagship phone. Right, right. So maybe it balances out to decent all-day use for moderate users. That seems to be the calculation, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so classic look. Android 13, decent mid-range power, cameras, battery. What about connectivity? This is crucial. Does it have modern ports? Yes, this is where the modern part really comes through. Global 4G LTE support. Essential. NFC for contactless payments. Must have. USB-C for charging and data. Good, the standard. And yeah. drum roll. The source confirms the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is back. Yes, excellent. So many people still want that. Wired audio option. It's great they kept it. Plus, micro SD card support for expandable storage. Another win for flexibility. Often missing now. Single SIM though, it says. Single SIM, yeah. Yeah. But that mix of modern stuff like USB-C and NFC with classics like the headphone jack and micro SD, yeah. it really shows that blend they're going for. It does. But there's one more interaction detail on the source. Something very BlackBerry. Oh, you have to mean the trackpad. The optical trackpad, that little square below the screen, it's included. Included and functional. The article says it works based on interaction like a precise cursor or directional keys. Just like the original. Pretty much. Yeah. For navigating, selecting text accurately. Oh, that's huge. That trackpad interaction was so distinct. Much better for some tasks than just poking the screen. Definitely. Selecting text, especially. Integrating that with Android is probably tricky, but if they nail it. It really sets it apart from just, you know, a standard Android phone with keys bolted on. It shows they understand why people like the classic. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the keyboard. It was the whole interaction model. That level of detail is promising. Okay, so... The big questions, price and when? The source gives us numbers. Expected launch price is around 400 US. $400, okay. Yeah. For what you're getting, new device, unique design, those specs, that sounds pretty reasonable, actually. Yeah, it puts it right in that competitive mid-range. Not budget, but definitely not flagship price. Makes it accessible. An interesting stop in the market. But there was something else in the article about price, something kind of wild. Ah, yes, the conversion kit. A conversion kit, what does that even mean? It's for people who still have their original BlackBerry Classic Q20. Wait, seriously? Yeah, for around $300, they plan to sell a kit. You could basically gut your old Classic and put these new internals in the new chip, RAM, storage, the Android 13 board. No way. So you keep your original phone's body, the one you've maybe used for years, to give it a modern brain transplant. That's the idea. It's incredibly niche. But also incredibly cool for the hardcore fans. What a nod to that existing community. It really is. It says, yeah. we see you, we value the hardware you love, mm. instead of just making them buy new. That's an amazing commitment. So the full phone and this conversion kit, when are they slated for release? Article says both are planned for early August 2025. August 2025. Okay, so not too far off, really. Next summer, physical keyboard fans, mark your calendars. Seems like it. And uh, the source also hinted this might just be the beginning. Oh, like other BlackBerry revivals? That's the suggestion. Xinhua apparently said if the Q25 does well, they want to look at other classic models. Did the article mention which ones? It did. Two big ones. Mm -hmm. The BlackBerry Passport. Whoa, the Passport, the square one. Yep and the BlackBerry Keone. Okay, the Keone makes sense. That was a later Android attempt anyway. But the Passport, uh, bringing that form factor back with modern Android. Imagine that yeah. ultra-wide keyboard, the square screen. It was so different. It really was. Seeing either of those reimagined could be fascinating. It suggests Zinwa thinks there's the real market here beyond just the classic, a market for tactile phones. Yeah, phones that break the mold of the glass slab. This whole Xinhua Q25 thing, it's this unique mix of nostalgia and modern tech. It could appeal to old fans, obviously, but maybe even people who just want something different. Could be. It's definitely an interesting proposition. Okay, so let's just uh, quickly recap the key points from the source. Xinhua Q25 looks and feels like a BlackBerry Classic. Physical keyboard, trackpad, even the notification light. Running modern Android 13. Powered by a Helio G99, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 storage. Solid mid-range stuff. Plus modern connectivity, USB-C, NFC, 4G. But keeps the headphone jack and micro SD slot. Which is great. Expected early August 2025. Around $400 for the phone or $300 for that conversion kit. And maybe, just maybe, revivals of the Passport and Keyon later if this works out. Right. What this whole project really screams is that there's a hunger, maybe small but passionate, for a tactile mobile experience. 
In a world totally dominated by touchscreens, it's not just typing, it's the feel, the trackpad. Yeah. A whole different way to interact. So the question for you listening is, does this resonate? Is this blend of nostalgia and modern smartphone power something you're actually interested in? Yeah, it really makes you think, doesn't it? Is the future of mobile just bigger touchscreens, faster processors? Or is there maybe room, real demand for looking back? For cleverly merging those old, loved physical designs with everything our current phones can do? It's a really interesting question, especially now that something like the Zinwa Q25 seems like it might actually happen. Definitely one to watch. Absolutely. Well, that was a fascinating deep dive. Thanks for joining us today. Always good to explore these uh, slightly unusual corners of tech. Until next time.